ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ you know uh, sometimes you come here you, you see people winning and you'll find maybe they have some special that you don't have and you'll discount what you bring and sometimes look at primary and you you see cam and his stuff that can't be cam and you're right this is me and you see Charles Lovett I can't be Charles and you're right cuz he's unique and Charles Knight and and Rodney Reed and right they all unique see when you stop competing against the person and start competing against the process that's it now it's a neutral playing field i may go into a, a kitchen and i want to bake a cake live out on will when i do my cake but the rest you don't change the balance you will so you can be on the process on the person and so when you can do that not to elevate you and you got to you got to trust in what you bring there are the 7 billion people on this planet if there was a, a stimulus gift so you don't we don't spend one billion dollars to you we'll give one out to people a thousand and we'll pay them And their only role is to search every face on this planet. If they find you one more time, we'll give you one billion dollars. I don't care how far you look. How many faces they're looking into in the past and through all social media, they won't find you one time. When God made you, he broke the mold. There is something unique for you to bring in. You start writing a poem right now. You got nobody can finish that poem but you. That's why when the conservation see someone, uh, an animal going extinct, they'll find because if that creature goes extinct, you cannot replicate, you cannot redo, you cannot recreate his song. He's most unique of all of God's creation. In a sense, you being human. It's impossible. You know how I many trillions of creatures on this planet, from insects to to our dogs and cats and, and and fish, but you're human. And you and you and the chance you being on in America in this hour, that all came before you. I'll do sometimes bring you to reality. I'll Google a third world country. And I'll go street view, and it puts you right on the ground there, and it makes you appreciate where you are. See, if if you, if you were in Cambodia, maybe you got the ideals of Prime America. Maybe you want to win big, but the people you're talking to can't even uh, hold the concept of insurance. Or uh, the the social structure won't allow you to become us. You won't build a primary business. Why are you here? You got to bring what you bring. I say I have four nephews, and I pay them every week forty dollars a piece. The whole job every day is to write twenty five things they're thankful for, and they got to write them down. The first five of them. They say thank you, Jesus, for my mom, thank you for my brother, and do that. They got to thank God for the things they take for granted. They got to change every day. Right. Your your eyesight, your ability to walk, things you take for granted. And then you got to have five on uh, uh, things that you uh, uh, that you aspire to be. Thank you for making me a leader. You got to leave on my voice now. Take it out to me. They got to listen to thirty minutes of Les Brown every day. They put it on with God. I got to pay their time. Because that, that that that's to show them you can't you you can't be sad and grateful at the same time. And when you start being thankful for what you are and what you have, it changes your whole view of things. And stop trying to compete against somebody because you don't have process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the pain feels better. Because we live in two natures. You got a dual. You ever see that cartoon with a kid? You see the devil on one shoulder, Cam. And ain't gonna show us. We leave now for a double. 
That's how we are humanity. You got an optimistic side. You got a pessimistic side. You're doing your nature. But you are the story you tell yourself. Which show do you listen to? When someone says you don't have what it takes to do something, they're 100% right. They say you have what it takes to do something, you're 100% right. Because you have dual nature. If you sit there and do nothing, and you don't put yourself into a practice, turn around, you don't have what it takes. God's word says be like the ant. You don't just sit around sitting and crossing the leg and crying about, oh, it's hard. Keep moving. I heard a story of this young lady, she, she had big aspirations to, to dance. And she was a, a ballerina. And she wanted, and she, she, I mean, she had the body structure. And when you watch her dance, it was in a rapture because, I mean, she was so clean in her, her rhythm. And she was so nimble in her foot. And, and, and when she, people would come to see her dance, and she knew she really loved entertaining people, that's what she wanted to do for her life. She knew that she would be able to travel the world with her just talent. But she was so caught up in opinions of others. And so a, a dance company came to town. And there's this world-renowned dance master in town. And she had to get them so she could get them to affirm the fact that she had what it takes to be a premier ballerina. And so she uh, went there and got there and, and she waited right after all of the dance was over. She was the last person left. She said, Mr. Dance, she kind of uh, told her she was excited about what she had witnessed and, and uh, how uh, she wanted to be somebody great one day. And he was kind of half a kid if he was in a long day and he was to go home. And she said, well, i got one question for you. Can you tell me what it, did I have what it takes to be a prima ballerina? And he said, well, dance for me. And she started dancing, and he was half looking at the one thing and said, no, you don't have what it takes to be a prima ballerina. And so she went home, she cried, and all of these ballerinas was, was there. That's what she always hoped for. But the story he told her, the way when he said she had what it takes, she didn't tell us that that story. You in dual natures. You got an optimistic and a pessimistic. And she went to the pessimistic side, well, I guess he's right. Mm. And she started telling us that that story. She threw all her shoes in the closet. Mm -hmm. Never did it again. And see, so you look at LeBron James. Yes, the, the LeBron James how would take you a great basketball player. Someone say they're absolutely not, they're right. See, Cody does, they're right. Because he has the right body structure. A lot of guys have the same body structure as LeBron James. The same two capable as LeBron James. But he decided to not just have what it takes, but to do what it takes. To put the work in. If he stopped working out, started eating Chris Green's on it every night. You will see a guy with total excellence go to nothing. Mm -hmm. He has what it takes, but you got to do what it takes. Right. And you look at you. You look at Cam and say, man, I'm impressed with what Cam does. Cam speaks English. You speak English. Cam has two legs, you have two legs. Cam's in primary, you're in primary. Can't want to win, you want to win. So you have what it takes, but the question will you do what it takes? Oh. And see, here, you find sometimes that you get caught up, you think, well, let me, but you, you evaluate the integrity of what primary is about. Now, you think of a relay race. And you win, when you got three legs to the race. Well, the first guy, he takes off, he's responsible. To give the other runners an aid. And he, he runs all he got. And, and every runner, there's a monkey always in the corner to get you when the fatigue hits. He can't say, well, I'm tired, so I'm just going to give up, because other folks are counting on him. So he pushes through that moment, and then he gives the baton to the next runner. The race runner can say, man, man, I'm, man, I just running over race. I don't feel like running today. No, son, you don't have just to 
Now you got the responsibility to run this race. And so he runs and gets to return other hands. And that anchor has the son to bring it on home. Our forefathers died. And foreign souls give us this opportunity. A greater future of America gives us this chance. But our forefathers just fighting just to be a dead city to sit at a count. And they gave us the time. And we're sitting around playing video games. And just relaxing and chilling. So we just have a right, we got the responsibility to take the baton to the next generation. Right. And so she, a uh, year past, she sees that she left her, uh, she was in the closet, and life went on. And she had kids and had a family. And, uh, and she's sitting around. And, 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 and if you look at where you are, God don't charge you his children. What you see you can be. Your dreams are a picture of your finished future. I don't sit up laying around dreaming about going to Mars. Because I'm not going to Mars. And you ain't either. <laughs> God don't torture you like that. What you see you can be, your dreams are a picture of finished future. You hold an acre in your hand. You say, where's the old tree? If he's already inside of it. You hold a caterpillar in your hand and say, where is the butterfly? The future's inside of it. When God holds you in his hand, where's your future? It's inside of it. But some stirs you and pulls you to manifest what's there. When I, when I got this one of his, uh, a sensation hit me, it was sir. Said, son, drink some or you'll dehydrate. Now I can ignore that and I can dehydrate. There's another sensation even later in here, the sensation of hunger. Said, son, eat something. Or you can eventually starve to death. And when that dream is pulling you to that future that's inside of you, you can ignore it, you can respond, you can ignore it and take that dream to the grave with you. You see that picture back on the wall, that time record of uh, post there? You take that picture, it's complete. Could have been small pieces, put it in a box, now you got a post. Now the post already completed. You just got to reassemble. So your dreams are a picture of finished future. Your job is to reassemble. That's why the, the scripture comes together so seamlessly, because the finished picture of humanity in God's mind. That's why you see it's coming and everything coming together. Because already completed, it's similar. See, if you look at uh, uh, you and a maze, you moving through a maze, that's what God said, you You move through a maze, and you, you look through the maze, you hit a, a corner, you think it's the end of the maze. Because your face is stuck. Now, you want to elevate above the maze and look down. Now, you see the beginning of the maze, the center of the maze, and the end of the maze. See, God is above time. He sees the beginning of humanity right now in your future. He should have asked for you. But when you have a puzzle, you got a responsibility. You just sit on the shelf and never put your labor in the assembly. So God says, be like your end. You got to be doing it. So that pitch is there. But it needs you to put your hands on it. You have what it takes. But will you do what it takes? It takes you to put your effort for it. And so years passed. And she, uh, her best years passed by. And then she had kids and they were mature now. And she saw an advertisement of the dance company coming to town again. And it was the old dance master. And he's aged now, but she could not wait. Because when she saw him, she went down memory lane. She just passed to come get you. And she started thinking about all the kind of dreams she had, and all the things she had about being somebody great and this sort of thing. All right? And so uh, she couldn't wait. She got a ticket and all. And when dance coming around, she went. And she saw all the dancers dancing real good and all the fun and she was just all inspired. 
Now, if she remembered, and all the ones she saw, they were celebrating, she was better than they were. And she knew it. She knew it. And she said, Lord, I forget you, what's the opportunity comes? You know what the real question is? What's the myth opportunity comes? Mm. What does it cost when you miss it? And see, my, uh, a few years ago, I'm at 3 Cent College on the corner of 635 and 7. And I'm in there, there's one of the guys in that copier shop, is an uh, old Anglo guy. Man, I'm looking at him, Kim. I ain't blinking, right? And I'm Negro, you know, don't you, right? right? He's getting nervous, right? I, I'm why I ain't blinking, right? Right? And he's sitting there turning red at the face, right? And finally, he was going to show me that eye contact. I said, Sir, is your name Bill? He said, Yeah. I said, Is your name Earl Little? He said, Yes. How do you know that? I said, Hold on, sir. I'm not to ask you questions yet. <laughs> do you know Reverend Gerald Wright? He said, Yes, my brother in law. How do you know that? I said, Hold on. Where are the lions, brothers? They had a twin coming out of the business a few months back. He said, How do you know that? I said, Sir, in 1989, you were up in Red Lobster on the corner of 635 North of Highway at noon to have lunch by the window. And the clerk said, Whoa, you got a great memory. I said, No, sir. No, I don't. I remember this stuff. The reason why I know you came and ate at that time because I was your waiter. Oh. And you guys were doing A.L. Williams at the time. And y'all gave me a card. And your brother, our Reverend Gerald Wright, hired me into the business. He said, we sure were. Oh, you said to that thing? I said, hold on, sir. I ain't to ask you questions yet. <laughs> Where is Johnny Murphy? He said, he's now selling mutual funds at high school. He, I said, he said, are you still doing that thing? I said, sir, as a matter of fact, I am. See, your past will come catch you. See, the clock moves too fast. Whether you win or lose, the past will come come get you. And I said, sir, because you gave me a call, I gave Terrell Knight in a call. Terrell was with at Houston's restaurant, making $2,000 a month. He had just cost a quarter million dollars in income at that time. And he began to get pale at the face. I said, because you gave me a card, I gave Jerry Red a card. Jerry just made 35000 a month before. Because you gave me a card, we gave Steve Coleman a card. He made 25000 a month before. Because you gave me a card, I gave Ronnie Allen a card. He cost around 48000 I began to call Roll. And he began to get more pale. Because you asked you what the opportunity cost? That's the wrong question. Real question was the miss opportunity comes. She missed it. And so she uh she she went to the dance uh performance and she and then when the dance she was so enraptured about what she she had witnessed because she knew she was better than everybody that had performed. And she wishes that I, I got I gotta get my curiosity satisfied. And so she waited and waited until everybody left and she was a dance master. He, she said, sir, she committed a moment of performance and all this, what happened. She said, there's one thing that always haunted me over all of these years. And she showed me a photo that when she was younger. Do you remember me? Said, no. And she showed me when she was, uh, 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 her, how life had passed her by and uh, what she wanted to do and all. She was talking about how life had changed because of uh, her encounter with the years earlier. You remember me? He said, no. He said, well, I got one question for you, Mr. Dance Master. How did you know so quickly? You don't look at me for a second. How did you know so quickly I didn't have what it takes to be a premier ballerina? He said, oh, young lady, I'd better look at you when you dance. I tell everybody, you don't have what it takes. 
to be a ballerina. So they're that man. And she started crying. I thought, yo, you ruined my life. You ruined, I could, I could have been great. I could have traveled the world. You ruined my life. And, and the Lord started trying to hold us to do it. And he never, he never flinched. He said, no, 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 no. I didn't ruin your life. If you had what it takes, let's pay any attention to what I said. <laughs> And see, some of y'all don't go home this evening. See, you have what it takes. You got a voice. You got an America. You got a prime America. You got a tribe. On the question, will you do what it takes? They tell you have what it takes, they're right. If you got everything it takes, they're right. But the question is, are oh, you going to listen to this optimistic side of the shoulder? Or this pessimistic side. And you ought to serve you tell yourself. You say, I got what it takes. You lean there and you start telling yourself, sir, you're going to be great and so wonderful. And then you, you take God's word literally. Should be like that. I'm going to put the work in. I'm going to give my all. And I'm going to, and if you have been at home sometime and, and a song come on anybody in the house that you, and you just start like dancing. I need to do it with, with no interruption. Because nobody's watching. <laughs> you ever been in the house and, and a song come on and nobody's there and he hit you right here and you start singing fully? Because <laughs> nobody's listening. What if you work like you couldn't fail? You got what it takes. Only question will you do what it takes. We were not here this weekend to sell you on Prime Era, but to sell you on you. That dream is that you have finished future. That's what God has for you. His gift link gave it to you that way. Your gift is him is to assemble it. And you gotta do it because he gave it. God bless you.